Hi guys, so in one of my previous videos, I spoke about um, VR headsets that require a smartphone and those that actually have a built-in display. So in this video, I'm going to dig a little bit deeper in terms of explaining what they mean when they say Head-mounted display, virtual reality headset. Wait, when they say head-mounted display, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> So yeah, basically VR headsets are one of the devices that are called or classified under head-mounted displays. So head-mounted displays are basically used in virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. I have a video where I explain the differences between the three, so I will pin it up there or down there. Um, yeah, but um, essentially, it's all about the fact that you've got a screen that is mounted on your head. Um, they have different ways in which, you know, they, like the, the user being myself is able to, you know, interact with or see the visuals. For instance, the display optics, which basically give you the visuals, are either in front of one eye, uh, which is called monocular HMDs, or both eyes, which is called binocular HMDs. So with with regarding binocular HMDs, these ones actually give you a larger field of view. I actually have a video on, you know, um, what actually impacts field of view. So this, you know, you're able to basically have this um, larger field of view because of the, you know, the, bino the binocular vision can, that comes from having both of the display optics in front of each eye. So actually, I would love for someone to please correct me if I don't understand this very well. Please put a comment down below. But yeah. So the advantage of binocular HMDs is that they give you stereoscopic 3D images. Uh, so that's pretty much why, you know, in the virtual reality space, you want to have um, display optics that are in front of both eyes. So Meaning the screen has to be binocular, a binocular HMD display. The screen has to be a, bin a binocular HMD. How HMDs work is that they either display computer-generated imagery, which is basically just virtual a virtual image, or they display, you know, an image from the real world or a combination of both. So in virtual reality, the HMD is basically displaying a computer-generated image, whereas in augmented reality and um, mixed reality, the computer-generated image let me just call it CGI going forward. The CGI is superimposed into the real world. Um, and that is why, you know, the, um, the goggles of um, augmented reality and mixed reality, mixed reality tend to be, um, you know, see-through or transparent as opposed to, you know, your virtual reality whereby it's like a hard, hard shell, which is not transparent because you basically all have, you don't need to basically um, see the imagery in imposed into the real world. So there's no need for it to be see-through. So let's dive into VR HMDs. So like I said, they are binocular HMDs, they display CGIs, they are not transparent as opposed to AR and MR HMDs. Um, and in addition to that, the type of um, display technology used has to be of high resolution and they generally come with um, uh, IMUs, which is basically a tracking device that makes sure that, you know, when you're moving your head, um, the image is actually moving according to your point of view. And how this works is that the tracker would basically tell the CPU where you are looking and the CPU will then send the correct image to the HMD and then the HMD will then, you know, display the, um, the, um, the screen. In actual fact, you have your head movement, right? Um, whereby the tracker will then is listening out to your head movement, uh, tell the CPU, you know what, this person is looking here. The CPU speaks to, you know, your graphics processing unit, which is a GPU. The GPU then sends through the images to the display and the display will then display basically the, the image to your eyes. So now if we get to the three types of VR HMDs, we've got your smartphone or slide on, um, HMD, there is your integrated HMD and your discrete HMD. So your smartphone mounted VR headsets uh, is basically the most basic type of um, HMD or VR HMD. So an example of these is your your famous Google Cardboard, your Google VR, your Samsung Gear. 
And basically, all, all that means is you need to have a smartphone which you slide onto um, the headset, which is now what we call the mount, which is where the mounted part comes in. So the smartphone basically does all the work. Um, the app is, down, is downloaded on the smartphone. The graphics are displayed on the smartphone. The tracking of your head movements are done by the smartphone as well as the sound. In actual fact, when it comes to the tracking, apparently the, the Samsung Gear does its own tracking. So I wonder how that actually works. Um, but yes, and then, you know, you also have your bubble VRs that have, you know, um, what you call those headsets on um, on them. So instead of listening to the audio through the phone, the smartphone itself, you're actually listening through the headsets, which is pretty dope. The second type of a VR head mounted display is an integrated HMD. An example of this is your famous Oculus Quest 2. So this is basically your all, your all-in-one type of um, HMD. So, you know, it does, you, it, you download the app on the headset itself. Um, it does its own processing. It does its own tracking. And, it, and the nice thing is that um, with a lot of these ones, they do 6D or F tracking, as opposed to, you know, your smartphone ones that, that do 3D or F tracking. Um, the sound also comes from um, the headset itself. So yeah, it's it's pretty dope because you know you have everything in one de device as opposed to you know the smartphone where you need to buy an extra device just to have a complete unit. So now the last one is your discrete HMD. So an example of this is again actually the Oculus Quest 2 because it actually um acts as both in a an integrated and a discrete um HMD. But then um, the Oculus Rift will be a great example. Your HTC, HTC Vive is another great example. And as well as your PlayStation VR. So these are basically tethered VR headsets. I have a video about what's the difference between a tethered and a wireless VR headset. I'll put it up here. So in the video, I do explain that tethered basically means that, you know, you are using the processing power of a PC, um, a VR-ready PC, might I add. Um, as opposed to, you know, um, a standalone VR headset. Um, like I said, Oculus Quest 2 is one of those that, you know, that plays uh, both ways. You can actually connect your VR headset to a PC. So what, how that would basically work is that, you know, the PC runs the app. So um, all the processing power is coming from the PC um, through the cable or wirelessly, uh, because now you do get like, you know, wireless uh, tethering. So through that, that connection, you then, um, the graphics are then displayed onto the headsets. Um, the nice thing about it as well is that, you know, you do get like, much better quality um, experience, you know, within a VR, ex um, VR environment because of the processing power. And I also talk about, you know, the, the, the advantages of the fact that, you know, um, you know, your, your battery won't run out and whatnot. But essentially, um, adding on to how this works is that, yes, um, the, the graphics are then displayed onto the headset. The headset still does the tracking and, you know, you still have the sound coming from the headset. Um, I, I know that there's, there's other types of um, devices that, you know, you can add on to um, this kind of setup. And I will talk about it, you know, in a different video. But yeah, in the nutshell, this is what discrete HMDs are. And you really, I believe that you move on to the discrete HMDs if you just want, you know, a better processing power. So guys, that's about it for today. Let me know if I missed anything, you know. Put your comment down below. Uh, let me know if I should talk about anything else. Um, I also do want you guys to tell me, you know, if I'm uh, if I have a concept like uh, not fully to the T, you know, because there's some people who are specialists and I'm not as yet. I'm still also learning um, about virtual reality and how everything works. So yes, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Look out for my next videos. Ciao.